Okay, so today is going to be day one of a new challenge that I'm starting. And it follows along the theme of using AI as basically a tool that is going to help me achieve what I want. And for this one, it's going to be about YouTube. So what I'm going to do is basically have ChatGPT be my guide for just a lot of things regarding YouTube for 30 days. And for the most part, it's not like a complete channel takeover from ChatGPT. It's mostly like what I want to do and like me asking ChatGPT like how best to do it. So let's get into it. I, I think that this is going to be a fun challenge. I've basically already started actually. Um, yesterday, I just typed in a few things explaining to ChatGPT like where I'm at right now on YouTube and where I want to be. So that's what we're going to explore and we're going to see how it goes. I think at the end, the main goal is just to see like, does ChatGPT like help me with what I want to do with YouTube? It, can it help me organize things? Can it help me like perhaps refine my ideas better, come up with better titles than me and like come up with thumbnail ideas and stuff like that. But of course, for me, I definitely want to have more input than ChatGPT. I don't want this to be like an entire channel that ChatGPT has created themselves. It's more so just a tool to help me. So that's the whole premise. And yeah, just I'm very curious to how well it can perform. Like, do you actually need to hire or like get a mentor for YouTube or anything like that? Or can you just use ChatGPT to be your YouTube mentor, to be your YouTube coach, like basically. So that's what we're going to do. Let's check it out. So right now I kind of did a lot of stuff or already put in a lot of things for what I want in terms of just giving ChatGPT my background and then my goal. So right now I said, I want you to be my YouTube channel coach. My goal is to make great content around projects that I do. I suppose my niche is productivity, habits, self-improvement, mindfulness, and related topics. I want to create a strong following with lots of engagement. I want to eventually create income with this YouTube channel by monetizing in different ways. I already have experience with creating online courses since I'm a top teacher at Skillshare. For context, my YouTube channel is six years old where I was active for about two to three years and then took a long break. Now I'm getting back into it. My starting point is 30,000 subscribers, but because of the break, the viewership is a lot smaller. Uh, there's more reasons to why the viewership is a lot smaller. I explained it in some of my recent videos, but that is the context so far for the niche of the channel it's kind of a little bit up in the air it's mostly going to be ha around habits self-improvement and mindfulness but like it's going to contain things like for instance the challenge i'm doing with japanese like 30 days of using ai to learn japanese that is not really th that doesn't really fall into any of these topics right here but i don't think ChatGPT needs to worry about that right now um Maybe I can just like add learning niche, like learning things, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing that a lot. But that's not the, that's just going to be one video. It's mostly like challenges that I'm doing right now for YouTube, my main channel. Okay, this is what uh, ChatGPT said. It's kind of a lot, so I'm just going to summarize. So ChatGPT said, said uh, it's exciting that I'm doing this. It's great that I have some experience. Let's break down some strategies. So audience re-engagement, reconnect with existing audience by making a comeback video. I basically already did that. And they're recommending I create an email list. So that's something I also think I should try to do because a lot of people recommend doing that if you're basically trying to create like a sort of business around your create creative stuff. So that is definitely going on the list. I already have that on my reminders, so I don't need to do anything right now. But as we go, I'll, I'll note some things down that I feel are like pretty important. Okay, content, planning for consistency and growth. Create a content calendar. Commit to a consistent um, posting schedule. Start with what's feasible. It's like weekly or bi-weekly, prioritize quality. So right now I'm doing my best to do weekly for the next three months, I'd say. And then I'm gonna probably switch over to bi-weekly. I feel like I want it to be weekly just to get like a, a good sort of get some momentum going as well as um, get some, yeah, just momentum and consistency. So, and then at a certain point, I'm sure my projects will get bigger and bigger. So at that point, like bi-weekly will sort of have to be um, what I do. Uh, so I already have like the, the next three months planned for, for the channel. I have every idea, every 
Like basically everything is a 30 day challenge. Almost everything is a, a 30 day challenge. So I'm doing, I think like eight 30 day challenge videos for, for the next ones. And I'm in the middle of a lot of 30 day challenges right now. So they're all really, really fun. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff I can talk about for each of them. Okay, mixing content types, pillar content, deep dive videos on core topics like productivity hacks, habit building strategies, or mindfulness routines. I don't think I will be doing any of those, um, to be honest. I, I just think like I've done a lot of these before and I don't really, I don't really like making too many videos around the same thing. I just feel like you can just make one video around that and potentially it's good enough, but I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind later. But for now, it says shorts, clips, YouTube shorts are great for increasing visibility with a wider, wider audience, repurpose your longer content into short, punchy segments. So that's an interesting thing that they're suggesting because I know there's this like, there's a difference between shorts and long form content and whether a debate, whether or not you want to put it on the same channel. So, but chat GBT says to put it on the same channel. So I will do that. I think that's one that I have to write down because it's not part of the strategy at all right now. So let me just write that down. Okay, so right here, live streams, Q&A, engage your audience directly, answer questions, and even workshop ideas with them live. That's a good idea, but I feel like I wouldn't do that on my main channel. I'd do that on this channel. Um, so potentially I, I, I'll do some live streams and stuff related to videos and stuff in the future. Um, evergreen and trend content, strike a balance between creating timeless evergreen content and uh, timely trend-based content that aligns with current uh, events or viral topics. Yeah, I've never been good with creating stuff around trendy content, so I'm not sure how well... I mean, I'm going to do my best for um, 30 days to adhere or follow whatever this guide is, but for the most part, the content that I have for the next three months are already set. So it's less about like them helping me brainstorm than it is about them helping me like structure things. But I am kind of curious about the brainstorming as well. So maybe I could shift things around and add like videos in between. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But I do, I don't want to dismiss the idea of like using ChatGPT as like also a brainstorming buddy. So I will kind of write that down right now. Evergreen. Let's continue. Leverage your Skillshare experience, cross promotion, build on course content. To be honest, I've never, I mean, I've done this before, but I personally don't really like doing it. Like I don't, I don't really enjoy putting stuff just to promote my own thing. Uh, in the sense that it's like not thematic with the channel. So because I'm making it like about sort of more challenge based, habit based content, I don't feel like randomly saying like, okay, on Skillshare, you can learn how to make videos and video learn video production elements. I guess I could do that as like a passing sentence, but I wouldn't, I would not want to make content like, like an individual video anymore saying like, uh, like this is a teaser for my Skillshare class, at least not on my main channel on this channel. I, I don't mind. This channel is like whatever, um, in terms of what I create, I can make anything I want. That's what this channel is for. It's not whatever in the sense like, oh, I don't care about it. It's more like whatever I do. Like I can, I can do whatever anyways. Okay. Moving on. So I'm not going to do this one because I just do not want to for cross promotion stuff. Um, but I will probably try to occasionally mention like, oh, check out this Skillshare class because you know, if you want to make videos like me or whatever, then you can check out my Skillshare stuff. And to be honest, like Skillshare, like long-term is not like my final strategy. I feel like eventually moving and creating your own premium courses and hosting them is better. So I don't feel like doing that too much. Okay. Monetization strategies, YouTube revenue, affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing. I feel like is pretty difficult. I already am an Amazon affiliate, but I don't really make too many videos like dedicated to affiliate stuff. I just feel like it's a little, I don't know. I don't feel much about it. Like there are certainly things I could make videos about in terms of gear and like camera gear, equipment, just stuff I find really, really useful. So I could do that for probably this channel, but like not my main channel, I don't think. Sponsorships, okay, well that's, yeah. I feel like that's uh, something I'd need to think about like later once I get more consistent viewership. 
paid products, services. If you're comfortable with the idea, consider selling your own courses, uh, coaching programs, or downloadable, downloadable resources. Yes, I will definitely be doing that. That is something already in the plans right now. Like I am basically already creating something like that. So I don't have to think about that since it's already marked down in my calendar for when to do it and all that stuff. So optimize for engagement. Hook viewers early. The first 15 seconds of your videos are crucial. Present the value proposition upfront to retain viewers. Got it. I, I can do that, I think. Okay. <laughs> Calls to action. Ask your viewers to like, subscribe, and comment. Prompt engagement by asking specific questions or encouraging people to share their thoughts. And my phone is being used right now, so let me just turn it off. Okay, SEO and analytics. SEO optimization. Research keywords that your audience is searching for using tools like TubeBuddy or Video IQ. VidIQ, optimize your titles, descriptions, and tags accordingly. So I think I don't really need to do this aspect right now because I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT itself for like what they think I should put in my titles, just like brainstorm with titles and thumbnails and stuff like that. So yeah, and since I don't really do too many videos around trends, like it should be fine. Analytics, regularly check your YouTube analytics to understand what content resonates with your audience and adjust your strategy accordingly. Yeah, that is a very difficult thing to do, I feel for me, because I like just making whatever I feel like making. And I've always struggled with like making content based around my analytics or based around like numbers, I guess. Um, so yeah, we'll see about that. I think I have like an intuitive sense now because I've kind of been on YouTube for a while for what will do better than uh, what will do good, like well overall and what won't. Um, so to me, it's more about like the viral packaging. It's like do what you want, but package it in a way that's viral and also like clickable and like watchable and, and stuff like that. It's, it's about the presentation rather than the, the content itself, at least when it comes to like clicking, when it comes to like people watching the video, if it's like boring content, then of course they're going to click away, but like at the very least package it to be very clickable. And then after that, you focus on the, the content and what you want to create and the message that you have and stuff like that. So that's sort of the way I think about it. And I'm probably going to stick with the way I think about it versus focusing too much on analytics because personally, I just, it's just something I can't really do that well. If, you know, if all my stuff fails and like fails miserably uh, for, for the next three months, then, you know, I, I'll start to start to really, really, really actually try my best to adhere by what the advice is. In that case, I'll probably have to make like a part two of this. Like it would basically be, I did not follow ChatGPT well enough. Um, and then I, I'm doing it a second time around. To be honest, most of my 30 day challenges, I fail the first 30 days. And then the, the second phase of the 30 days is like where I actually succeed and see some really good results. Okay. Would you like to explore any of these areas in more detail or have any specific questions? Okay, I said, those are great tips. I'll get back to them when the time comes for each one. But for now, let's do a step-by-step -step thing so I don't get overwhelmed. Right now, I just created my comeback video saying that I'm changing the name of the channel. Now I'm crafting the new content and I want to try my best to make each one of my videos as watchable and clickable. Basically, I want to make it as viral as possible or at least the packaging as viral as possible. That's what I already said. So my next video is about how I challenge myself to do 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups every single day for 30 days straight. Can you help me with making that video viral by giving me advice on title, script, and structure? So for scripting, I will definitely script on my own because I've scripted plenty of videos before. I have a lot of experience with scripting. I can probably ask ChatGPT to help me with like looking at my script and seeing like if they think certain parts are unneeded or certain parts are good, getting feedback basically on my script from ChatGPT. But for the most part, what I'm gonna do is just script on my own. Um, but the structure of the script, I wouldn't mind getting some like advice on. Um, so it's more more like I'm using ChatGPT as a brainstorming buddy rather than like ChatGPT is doing the work for me, if that makes sense, because I, I definitely don't want to have ChatGPT do the work for me. It's more so just like a tool to help me do the work better. So that's that's like a that's like a line I want to make sure that I create and that I want to make sure that I, I'm like making very clear. So I will not use like a script generated by ChatGPT. I simply won't. But for their titles, I don't mind like taking a good chunk of it because I feel like titles in general for me, I'm 
I'm still struggling to make good titles. So um, this is their title optimization. It needs to be concise, clickable, and highlight the value of the challenge. Some title ideas. I did 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups every day for 30 days. Here's what happened. That's To me, that's kind of like not a great title, but what do I know? Um, 30 days of 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups, my body transformation. Honestly, my body did not transform that much, so that that's like not a great title. <laughs> uh, 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups every day for 30 days. Insane results. I wouldn't really call the results insane. Uh, that's not the heart of the mess. Heart of the the challenge. I think I need to give GPT more information before. And also, I haven't read this all of it yet. Um, I I just prompted it and then left it at that. Um, because I had to go somewhere right afterwards. So this is my first time reading through all of this. Um, 30 day push up and pull up challenge. Can you survive this? I feel like for me, I've been thinking that I just need to call it one thing, not push up and pull up. And then I'll introduce the challenge as both in the video, but in the title, it's just going to be one of them. And I feel like to me, 50 pull ups is more um, interesting than 100 push ups because I feel like most people in my opinion, and I have a very biased opinion because I've done so many push-ups in my life. Most people can achieve 100 push-ups in a day. Um, maybe not for 30 days straight like I did, but certainly it doesn't seem that difficult in your head. But 50 pull-ups every day for 30 days straight, that sounds more challenging in my opinion, uh, especially since pull-ups are significantly harder to do than push-ups. So I will ask ChatGPT to come up with new titles uh, right now. Can you actually come up with new title recommendations. I want the title to just contain the 50 pull-ups aspect since I think that 50 pull-ups is harder than 100 push-ups. Man, I don't know. I feel like a lot of these I don't really like that much. So there are some other, there's some familiar stuff like, oh, I did 50 pull-ups every day for 30 days, insane results, 50 pull-ups a day for 30 days. Here's what happened. 30 days of 50 pull-ups. Can you handle this challenge? Nothing is like that interesting in my opinion. Um, this is what happens when you do 50 pull-ups for a day for 30 days. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to like come up with some better stuff for the title. Um, I will continue to try to do this later, but also this video I want to create. Um, today is October 10th. I want to upload it in, I guess, four days, basically, on the 12th this Sunday. Um, so hopefully I can do that. We'll, we'll see. Here's a thumbnail strategy. Before and after feature a comparison of how you looked before and after the challenge. Again, like for 30 days of just doing push-ups and pull-ups, you're not going to look that different, you know? That's just like not how growth works. Um, Especially since like for for me, I wasn't like doing anything with my diet. It was just pure push-ups and pull-ups. So that can't, that won't work. High contrast text, use bold and easy to text 30 day challenge or insane results or to grab attention. Eye catching imagery, consider having a high energy pose or showing you doing push-ups, pull-ups mid action. Faces, especially expressive ones help draw clicks. So this one is gonna be interesting. I don't know how to do how to capture my face while doing pull-ups in my house because that's very difficult because my pull-up bars are all like at the door frames so it's like when i do it my face is completely covered by the uh the wall so i don't know i i think i might have to fake it somehow um because i do have like a, a dip bar that i can use to pretend that i'm doing a pull-up and then just have like the, the angle and everything like that i don't know we'll see we'll see like it's just a thumbnail it's not like I'm tricking them. I am doing the pu the pull-ups like for real in, in the video uh, and for the challenge. Okay, so structuring your video for maximum engagement is key. Here's a proven framework to follow. Hook for 30 seconds. First few seconds are crucial. Posing a question and making a bold statement. What happens if you do 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups every single day for 30 days? I wanted to find out and it wasn't easy. That's kind of long. Quickly show a few snippets of your progress and results to build curiosity. Again, I'm not going to use their script. I'm going to write my own, um, but it's good to like at least have the video structure right here. So we have a hook, introductory, why, explain why you're taking on the challenge and what you hope to achieve. Why this challenge goes on expectations, the challenge breakdown, breaking down the rules. You know, honestly, I have a structure already created and it looks very similar to this. Like, I mean, it's a very basic structure, right? Like hook. Um, introduction and why I'm doing it, what the rules are, and then basically what happened, right? Use a week-by-week -week breakdown to show your progress. 
Week one, show your struggle in the early days. Week two, highlight improvement in strength, but mention any pain or difficulties. Week three to four, focus on momentum building, your body's physical changes and mental shifts. Bonus tip, add time-lapse clips of your performing of you performing push-ups and pull-ups over time. Uh, yeah, I mean, all my clips are gonna basically be me doing push-ups and pull-ups for the B-roll because like that's that's basically what the whole challenge is. Okay, results and takeaways. Showcase your transformation, both physically and mentally. This part needs to be visual and impactful. Yeah. Dang, like, I feel like I really wish I physically changed more. I did record myself before and after, and I haven't really looked at it that closely. But honestly, it's not a huge change. So it's kind of like, I guess I can show it, but it's not going to be like that impactful, in my opinion. So the mental transformation is the main focus of why I'm creating this video in the first place, because having done 100 push-ups in a row and 30 uh, and 50 pull-ups in a row, I actually did a, a 130 pull-up challenge on this channel uh, before I didn't succeed every single day. But for this new challenge uh, that I recently finished, I did 100 push-ups and 50 pull-ups, all of it every single day for 30 days straight. And to me, that was like a very, very difficult task physically and also mentally. I think half the battle was meant, I think 80% of the battle was mental because like I could do it. Um, but I mean, sometimes I, I physically did feel a lot of pain and not, not, not like permanent injury type of pain, but like it definitely was enough to make me feel like, okay, I should, I should probably rest tomorrow or like this isn't a good idea, stuff like that. But I still stuck with it and tried my best. And that sort of taught me mental resilience and like consistency and succeeding it felt really, really good. It felt like it made me feel like I could basically accomplish any 30 day challenge that I set my mind to. Um, it was like it didn't need to be about push ups or, or pull ups and it just needed to be something challenging enough to the point where like I it wasn't easy to do, but I still powered through it and did it. Um, and that made all the difference in like my confidence, um, the way I saw myself, like just my the feeling of like success, the feeling of like knowing that I accomplished it made me made me just like feel completely different. I, I, need, I will definitely put it in better words once I script it, but that's the best I have right now in terms of like what the main message is of this video. Um, and, and why this video was, was very pivotal to basically me starting to, to do a lot of things. So let's continue call to action, eight minutes, 8.30. They even have timestamps for like how long things should be. So that's interesting. I think I might try my best to adhere to it. It would be kind of fun to do that. Uh, again, like for me, the heart of the video, the main message is the only thing um, I care to convey. Like if if I can make a video where that message is conveyed and that and my feelings are, are said and expressed um, regarding my my experience around this challenge, that's all that matters. Like I don't care that much about the structure of the video. I don't care that much about like the title. I don't care that much about the thumbnail. What I care about is the heart of the video, which is the message that I have, which is the overall takeaway from my experience. So as long as I can deliver that in an impactful way, um, to me, that is me, uh, that is me making a video with heart in it. Cause that's what I said, like for my, um, last video for dreamlet. Now, now my main channel's name is changing. I said that my later videos in dreamlet, they didn't really have heart in it. They, they were kind of just a little bit soulless. They were like, okay, just make a tutorial on this because you know, maybe people will watch that because people use that software often or whatever it's not there, there's no heart in it there's no like message there's no story there's no like impact it's just a tutorial i mean tutorials are great like i've made so many and people have um said that they really appreciate it and i'm glad that i can help them out but like at the same time like for my main channel i don't want to make tutorials i might make tutorials on this channel but um and on you know i'm i will make uh skillshare courses in the future as well and probably tutorials on this channel like i said so it's not like i hate them or anything like that it's just on my main channel, I don't want to create that anymore. Like it's not something I particularly enjoy that much. I don't hate it, but I don't necessarily enjoy it that much. But I, yeah, that's something I will not be doing anymore. And I, I want to always have heart in the video. So to me, that's what heart means is to, to have that impact and message and narrative and story 
in the video. So as long as I have that, it doesn't matter how it's structured. It doesn't matter what the title is and all that stuff. Like I said, I don't want to keep repeating myself. So let's continue. Okay. Results and takeaways showcase your transformation, both physically and mentally. This part needs to be visual and impactful. Uh, that's what I just read. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Call to action. And with a clear call to action, engage the audience. If you want to push yourself like this, try the challenge and comment below with your progress. That's a good one. I think I will do that. Next steps, tease your challenge or video to keep viewers excited. Tease your next challenge. Um, Subscribe, reminder, encourage people to subscribe for more content like this. Got it. So call to action. I definitely want to include, like, if I do make a, an, a mailing list, which I don't know if I can create on time, I guess for the first one, I don't really need to make a mailing list. That's like too fast, too soon. So I think I'll do it for the next one because honestly, it's, it's a little too much at once already. Um, so I, I will tease my next challenge for sure. Okay. Script writing tips. Keep it conversational. Your audience will appreciate a down to earth, relatable tone. Speak like you're talking to a friend who's curious about your journey. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to actually, I don't know. I, I like telling stories, so it, it might not be conversational, but at the very least, it's going to be like a narrative, a story. Like I'm just telling a story. Um, and I do, I do agree that like for something like pushups and, and pull-ups, it might be better to, to make the tone a bit more conversational, but at the same time, I kind of do have a natural tendency to do that voiceover voice when I do voiceovers, and I'm sure to do voiceovers for this one. So I don't know. We'll see. Incorporate humor. If it feels natural, drop in a few lighthearted comments about the pain or struggles. Humor can keep people engaged. That is a great tip. I mean, I did not know that at all. Thank you, Shit. Uh, <laughs> incorporate humor. Wow. I, really, really great advice. I, I think I naturally sometimes try to incorporate humor. I'm not the best at it, to be honest, but I, I generally have become a less serious person over time. I, I'd say like I was a very serious person as a kid and then not as a super little kid, but I mean like probably sixth grade and beyond fifth grade and beyond. I was very serious. Uh, of course you have both sides, right? You're not always serious. I, I would, mess around with my family very often, but with my friends, I was very serious. And then eventually towards, I think college, I was still a bit serious, but I was less so. My roommates were like clowns. They, they kept making jokes left and right. I think they definitely rubbed off on me and I left college a little bit less serious. And then over time afterwards, I just slowly became less and less serious of a person because in my opinion, it's just more fun to not be serious all the time. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's my simple conclusion to that. So I will try my best to incorporate humor. Thank you. Be authentic. People love seeing the real side of challenges. Be transparent about tough days, failures, or unexpected wins. Okay, I mean, that much is obvious. Editing and pacing, quick cuts to keep it fast paced and engaging. Use quick cuts, especially in the first few minutes on the screen text. Uh, on screen text. Okay, got it. B roll as well as clips from your daily life to show how you fit the challenge into your routine. That's an interesting idea. Maybe, maybe not. Music, pick upbeat and motivational music for your workout sequences, but also switch to slower introspective music during your reflection moments to create emotional contrast. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing. So right now I'm trying my best to use only my original music, the music that I've created um, for my videos. I've basically been doing that for all of my new videos so far this year, but I do think that my piano music, because most of my music is piano originals, is not quite upbeat and motivational enough for like workout stuff. So I might need to find some royalty free, um, free music. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. SEO optimization, use tags. Like I have not used tags whatsoever for, for YouTube recently. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll add these in. Description, write a keyword rich and uh, keyword rich description summarizing your video and its value. Use cha YouTube chapters to break down each section of your video for better engagement. Okay, I mean, they basically did it for me, so that's cool. Okay, they did not make very good titles, so I will try my best to craft a, a title on my own. Um, let's see what ChatGPT can do he from here i mean honestly i think at this point i just need to write the script and then come back with the script and give and ask ChatGPT for feedback so i will likely do that today off camera um, because there's no point in recording myself in complete silence for a long time 
while I write the script and then putting it in ChatGPT. I can record it and yeah, I, th I think I can record it tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a higher level sort of thing with ChatGPT. Um, instead of just talking about one video, I want to ask it some questions about like what it thinks I should do for YouTube. Okay, so I'm actually going to ask it uh, to help me with brainstorming because I'm, I'm curious to what ChatGPT has to offer in terms of brainstorming. That's kind of like an obvious thing to use ChatGPT for. Again, I don't really like, I'm not gonna do anything that I don't want to do. So if it helps me brainstorm something and suggests like certain videos uh, where the idea is like, I don't like it, then I'm just not gonna do it. So it doesn't, but if it sounds really good, then you know, I'll maybe put it on the list, let's see. So my next videos are basically all 30 day challenges. Here are some examples of challenges I already have completed that I'm going to make videos about. 30 days of zero entertainment, entertainment media, 30 days of perfect sleep, 30 days of drinking the perfect amount of water, 30 days of, actually I'm still in the middle of the sleep one and for water, there's still a few more days, um, but 30 days of audio journaling, 30 days of reflecting on my life, 30 days of learning Japanese using AI, 30 days of exercising for 30 minutes. Now that you have a sample of what my challenges are about and what they're like, can you help me brainstorm some 30 day challenges that have good viral potential? All right. 30 days without social media, such a basic one. Come on, ChatGPT, you can do a little bit better than that. I, I feel like I, that's the same thing as the zero entertainment media because I don't go on social media because of this. All right, 30 days of waking up at 4.30 a.m. See, I hate that challenge. I've done 5 a.m. before for a week and I'm not gonna do 4.30 a.m. Early rising challenges are popular, especially if you show how it impacts productivity and daily routine. You can also experiment with different morning routines and compare. Eh, I, I'm not gonna do it. I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. I prefer the fact that I'm already talking about sleep and just like having the right amount of sleep is good enough. 30 days of daily meditation. That's actually on my list of things to do. Um, so I don't, yeah. 30 days of cold showers. I'm gonna be honest to me, I've never seen the point of cold showers. Is often tied to physical and mental toughness, which generates curiosity. People are intrigued by the health benefits and the resilience building aspect. There's so many more ways to prove resilience. And I don't know, cold showers just doesn't seem like something that is necessary. Like just do something else that actually makes a, a bigger difference. I mean, like it's a, it's a fun thing, sure. I I, I think people who, are do, who do it, that's cool. That's like, it's interesting. I, I don't like it, I've tried it before like doing a cold shower thing for like a few days. And I was like, nope, this ain't for me. So they are, they are more resilient than me when it comes to taking cold showers. But like, I don't see it as like a very good challenge. 30 days without sugar. <laughs> that, that one seems interesting. Many people are exploring how cutting out sugar affects their body and mind. You could highlight energy levels, cravings, and body transformation during the process. 30 days without sugar. That seems so hard, but like, it also seems very interesting. I might actually add that one to my list because um, it seems insanely difficult. And I'm sure there's also like a whole explanation behind it that I would need and also need to do in the video because like so many things have sugar. So like, how are you going to avoid it? But maybe I can sort of change the challenge a little bit to make it a bit more interesting and more meaningful to me because yeah, I do feel like, I do feel like, um, diet is something I really want to explore a bit more. I, I don't really, other than drinking water, I don't really like do much with diet. So, um, it'll be an interesting, it'll be an interesting thing to explore. Okay. 30 days of learning a new skill. You cannot be more broad than that. Um, I mean like Jap uh, Japanese is what I'm basically doing right now. It could be something like coding, playing an instrument, or cooking. I minored in CS in college, and I did use some programming in my part-time work back then. I don't really use it that much these days. It would be fun to actually re-explore that. 
So I might try it at some point. I'm playing an instrument, playing a new new instrument. I have, I actually have that as like some dirty day challenges. So that could actually be fun. It's already on the list. I haven't scheduled it, but definitely. Cooking is a good one. Cooking is a very good one. I am not very good at cooking. I know how to, but I'm not very good at it. And I don't do it very often, so. Documenting your daily progress of how much you can learn within 30 days can inspire viewers to try learning something new themselves. Yeah. And honestly, for some of these, like playing a, an instrument I've never played before, it would honestly be very, very fun because it's like something brand new. 30 days of writing 1,000 words a day. Writing challenges can attract people interested in creativity and productivity. Whether journaling, storytelling, or working on a book, you can share tips on building a writing habit. I am planning actually on writing a book in the future, so um, this, this challenge is probably already on the list. 30 days of gratitude journaling. That's a good one. I feel like that could easily be a a podcast series, like after I finish with my life reflection, I'm just doing 30 days of gratitude. 30 days of minimalism, decluttering your space, wardrobe, and digital life for 30 days ties into the popular minimalism movement. Hmm. I feel like I'm naturally already a minimalist, um, but I have not really looked into that space very much. So I don't know, I don't know. This one's definitely something I'm curious about. So I'll put it on the list, but like, I don't know. The only thing I'm not a minimalist about is camera stuff, uh, video production stuff. I, I definitely got way too much stuff at a certain point, but I've been slowly like getting rid of it. Basically, my, my friend recently um, bought my camera from me. So I'm like, yes, goodbye, A7C. You were very, very useful, um, but I hope you are used well by my friend. The A7 IV has me covered though. I love that camera. It's a really, really good one. Okay, 30 days of no caffeine. I don't drink caffeine already, so I've been doing that for all my life. 30 days of no complaining. Ooh, that is a tough one. 30 days of no complaining. I don't think that's possible. Um, like, do jokes count? Do, like, if I complain about how ChatGPT isn't good enough at recommending titles, is that a complaint? Um, probably, right? So... I don't think that I could do that. This is a mental and emotional challenge that resonates with people trying to build a more positive mindset. Document your experience and how this mindset shifts. Uh, mindset shift impacts your interactions and daily life. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that one's that impactful for me. I feel like I'm already generally a positive person. Um, like I don't complain seriously that much about too many things. Um, I will make fun of stuff for being dumb, but I, I won't actually complain about it um, with like that fury or anger that some people complain with. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be a very effective challenge for me personally. It's definitely a, an interesting one though. 30 days of learning a dance routine. That's kind of like out of the, out of nowhere, but it would be a fun one to get back into dance since I haven't done it in a very long time. But I think for the time being, it's okay. Uh, I don't really have like a strong urge to do it. Okay, 30 days of meal prepping, 30 days of no spending. How is that even possible? How is it possible not to spend any money for 30 days? Like you, you have to like pay the bills, right? You have to pay rent, you have to pay something. Like, I mean, assuming you, you create rules where it's like, okay, other than the absolute essentials, you can't spend on anything. That actually sounds like a good one. Honestly, that, that, that sounds like a, a pretty good one, but a very short one at that too. I've actually been buying a lot of things recently on Amazon. I'm not proud of it, honestly, but like uh, it's stuff that I, it's like a new light, I, uh, a new tube light. I hope it comes soon um, because I think they just had like Prime Day deal. And for whatever reason, Amazon Prime just gave me a random free trial for Prime. So I used the, the deal for the tube light. Normally it costs like 150 or something like that. So And then it costs like 110. So yeah, I just bought it and... I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, just buying some things on Amazon recently, things that I need, but like, yeah, I don't know. At the same time, I feel like when I was in Japan, I mean, obviously I didn't buy anything off of Amazon. And then when I came back for about like two to three months afterwards, I didn't buy anything from Amazon. But all of a sudden, like being here in California for a while again, I'm like, interestingly, just like buying more things. So yes, I will add this one to my list, 30 days 
of no spending. Like it sounds ridiculous enough to like be a good enough title actually, because it's like, how do you not spend anything? But like when you explain the rules, of course, it's gonna make sense. 30 days of daily stretching and yoga. Uh, 30 days of yoga actually sounds interesting. Like I've never tried yoga officially, so it would be kind of interesting to get into it. And these things are not like things I'm gonna do anytime soon, to be honest, because I have way too many 30 days challenges going on right now. 30 days of yoga. 30 days of random acts of kindness. That's a cool one. I like that. I, I, I vibe with that. Let's just add it to the list. 30 days of random acts of kindness. Again, I'm not gonna like do these completely outright. Maybe some of them like the no spending one, but for most of them, I will probably change it um, to fit more of like what I want. I'll, I'll brainstorm some more. 30 days of learning a new language using AI. I mean, you've already, you already have Japanese, but you could extend it to another language. At the moment, I, I'm okay. I, I don't feel like I want to learn that many languages at once. I kind of want to gain fluency in Japanese before I actually do that. 30 days of 10,000 steps. I've done that. I have, I've done that on this channel, actually. Um, but which of these stand out to you or would you like to brainstorm more specific ideas around a particular theme? Why don't you get to know me just a little bit better so that you can make more personalized recommendations? Oh no, I love playing piano. I've created original piano pieces. I used to do gymnastics quite often, early adult years. I'm now closer in my late 20s and I don't do it anymore, but I sort of want to get back into it. I've been using AI for a lot of things as well to when I say AI, I just mean ChatGPT, honestly. I've been using ChatGPT as a tool to help me with a lot of things recently. I'm interested in learning more about finances and money related topics. I have a general interest in physical activity and exercise. I enjoy it a lot. I also enjoy video creation and voiceovers. I have an interest in voice acting. I also really enjoy technology in general and I keep up with Apple products. Okay, that should be enough of a description. This is a very, very general like description of things that I have done and like. Okay. 30 days of composing one piano piece a day. That would be like super hard to be honest. Um, each piece would be like kind of crappy, but like it does sound like a very fun challenge and it's something I've considered, but I already have like a 30 day challenge of like composing and trying to finish my first music album scheduled. So we don't really need that at the moment. 30 days of getting back into gymnastics, 30 days of learning about personal finance. That's also something I already have on the list. 30 days of tech detox, except for essential work. A digital detox is a challenge that ties into both mindfulness and your interest in tech. You can reflect on how stepping away from certain technologies impacts productivity, mental health, and creativity. Yeah, I mean, like, really depends, but nah. 30 days of learning voice acting. I already have that in the books. 30 days of daily gymnastics conditioning. 30 days of Apple product experiments. Experiments like using only iPad for work or productivity hacks using wa Apple Watch features. Maybe. 30 days of using ChatGPT for everything. <laughs> That's a funny one. I do think it would be really funny to like let ChatGPT sort of take over like completely. Obviously, I'm not doing that for this YouTube channel, but like it would be like a fun challenge. I don't know if, if doing it for 30 days would be a good idea. Um, but yeah, it sounds it sounds interesting. It really does sound interesting. I think I can adapt it into something that's a bit more like doable, but like the sound of 30 days of using ChatGPT for everything is really, it's a good title. I, I like that, it, it resonates with me. 30 days of piano playing workouts, that's okay. 30 days of creating a voice acting portfolio, 30 days of learning financial terms specifically. 30 days of stretching for gymnastics, okay. I feel like um, right now ChatGPT is kind of like staying in like, the realm of very realistic and very like standard, almost a little general. So I'm going to tell it that um, a lot of the ideas were a bit standard and general. I would like to take it 
a step up and make the challenges a bit more ridiculous and interesting. I liked the 30 days of using chat GBT for everything challenge because it sounds really fun. Can you give me some more crazy ideas? Let's see. Oh, memory is full. We'll manage that later for now. Let's see. 30 days of speaking only in movie quotes. <laughs> what? <laughs> that that does sound quite ridiculous and wild, to be honest. <laughs> but like, what's the point in that? <laughs> like, I, I think that would be funny for sure. 30 days of living like a superhero, I guess. 30 days of trading everything I own. 30 days of doing gymnastics in public. It sounds so like pretentious. 30 days of speaking in different accents. That could help with with um, voice acting, actually. I, I, I like that idea. I think speaking in accents is, is pretty fun um, for the purposes of voice acting and just comedy, I guess. Okay, so I added that one. 30 days of eating like a child. Nah, 30 days of learning insanely useless skills. Spend each day learning a skill that seems completely useless. Bouncing a spoon on your nose, speed stacking cups, or solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. The more absurd the skills, the better. That one sounds like such a waste of time, but it sounds fun. I think it would be easy enough to be like 30 days of learning this insanely useless skill. Um, and then I just choose a skill that I'm already interested in. Um, so it's not useless because I have interest in it. Um, I mean, it could be useless, but like at the very least, it's not something that I don't care about. So that's a good title. Three days of learning this insanely useless skill. 30 days of living like a video game character. Okay. 30 days of extreme cold exposure. Why? 30 days of doing every internet hack. Try out every viral hack and life hack you can find on the internet. Hmm, interesting. 30 days of saying yes to everything within reason. Uh, I don't know about that. 30 days of dressing like it's the 90s? No. 30 days of communicating only through voiceovers. What? 30 days of training like a stuntman. 30 days of mimicking celebrities' daily routines. And I don't really keep up with celebrities. 30 days of talking only in rhyme. That'd be very difficult. 30 days of swapping lives with a friend. Okay. Can you personalize these to my interest? Just give me 10 of them. After this, we'll be done. I think this was a, a fun sort of beginning of trying to use ChatGPT as my YouTube coach. Um, there's a lot of aspects of the coaching process that I need to like get down a bit more or like clarify a bit more right now i'm sort of using ChatGPT just as a brainstorming buddy or brainstorming coach i guess and then advisor for titles and thumbnails helping make sure that the video i'm creating at the moment has like viral traits in it or and like with the structure of the video itself but i feel like i need to ask certain questions like whether or not it thinks um my ideas has like viral potential and stuff like that I, mean, I can i can do that right now afterwards let's just blaze through this really quickly and then we'll ask it 30 days of composing piano music using ai prompts interesting 30 days of doing gymnastics in random no that's like the same thing investing based on ai advice oh my god that would be so bad i i, I feel like this this gives me a reaction so I, I it's definitely a good title that's for sure yeah, it's a curious thing. I'm not actually going to like risk like a huge amount of money, but like perhaps putting something in like 200, 300 and investing that and seeing like what happens is an interesting thing. But yeah, we'll see. 30 days of narrating my life as a voice actor. No, 30 days of letting ChatGPT be my personal trainer. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that one. Eventually we'll, we'll be done with the 30 minutes exercising thing and then Changing it up would be fun. So having ChatGPT be my personal trainer sounds fun. Third days of living like an Apple product launch. What? Uh, I'm not that into Apple. I just have Apple stuff. So I don't know. Okay. 30 days of gymnastic strength challenges. 30 days of producing piano tracks blindfolded. Okay. 30 days of becoming a fanager guru with zero background. That sounds like so scammy. All right. 30 days of speed learning voice acting characters. Okay. That's enough. Let's do, in terms of the ideas I mentioned, I already have. Do you feel like, there should be a comma. 
you feel like there is enough viral potential there. Can you give me advice on how to make the ideas I already have the best version they can be? Okay, it says here, fits well within the niche of self-improvement and productivity, which is popular on YouTube. To maximize their viral potential, here are specific strategies for each challenge to make them more engaging, unique, and clickable. This taps into digital detox trends, which resonate with people wanting to improve their focus and productivity. Frame it as a desperate reset, like I quit on there. My brain was melting. You know, honestly, my brain was kind of melting. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad title. Um, structure, um, emotional breakdown moment. Wow, they're really giving you like the the uh, the rundown on how the video should be, uh, which is very interesting. Um, I don't think I'm gonna actually do that emo emotional breakdown moment because I, I I can't act like that, but I can certainly tell like I can certainly tell the story of how what led me up to it, and and it was definitely very emotional. So. Um, I was very, very angry with myself, basically. So there's definitely that. So clickbait thumbnail. You know, ChatGPT is not afraid to just like call it clickbait. <laughs> okay, before and after shots with a massive difference in energy levels or productivity. You could see a zombie version of you versus a fresh focus you. I actually really thought, I, I thought about that thumbnail. It's a, it's a good one. I've seen it in other productivity channels where it's like someone being very tired and then another one like the same person being like very energetic comparison type of thumbnail. So. That's a good one. It's not really clickbait though. It's just, I mean, I guess you can still, you can call it clickbait, but it's not like you're not tricking anyone. Um, I don't know. I think Veritasium had a really, really great video about clickbait. He called it, I forgot what he called it. Like, um, but he said it wasn't clickbait. It was something else. Can I tell okay. I actually watched the video to figure out what he called it. He called it legit bait. So basically what you see in the thumbnail is actually what you actually uh, get. I hate when I repeat words like that, but yeah. So legit bait means like you see a thumbnail and it's it still like has the elements of making you want to click it, but like it actually is still legit shows you what it's promising, you know? So that's the kind of stuff that I would want to make in terms of the thumbnail. Legit bait, not click bait just to make it sound better, just because I feel like clickbait definitely has a very negative connotation. The third day is a perfect sleep. Uh, sleep challenges have viral potential because sleep is something everyone struggles with. And sleep, perfect sleep sounds like an elusive dream. It is a dream. This challenge is very difficult. And despite sleeping like at the right times, you still, it's still difficult. I tried the world's most perfect sleep routine for 30 days. That, that sounds way too, uh, um, Make it extreme. I, I guess, yeah, it does kind of have to be extreme, but I, I wouldn't say it was the world's most perfect sleep routine. I, I, I'll try to come up with an alternative that feels a bit more truthful. Um, use a graph showing dr dramatic improvement in sleep quality or a side-by-side -side, um, sleep deprived version of you versus a well-rested one. Very similar to the, the top one. I guess ChatGPT thinks those thumbnails are the most effective. They are pretty effective. 30 days of drinking the perfect amount of water Addition challenges can feel basic, but it appeals to health conscious viewers. You need a unique twist to make it pop. Can drinking the exact right amount of water transform my body in 30 days? Yeah, that's not, man. ChatGPT really likes body transformation stuff. I do, I kind of want to try a body transformation thing, um, but it's really difficult. It's really, really difficult. You'd have to like upend your whole diet um, and routine um, for, for physical fitness. I'll probably eventually get to it. Potential journaling is a popular self-help technique, but this gives it a modern tech-driven twist by doing it via audio. I audio journaled for 30 days. Here's what I discovered about myself. That's pretty good in terms of just like being a good assistant with giving you ideas and stuff because these are things I wouldn't have really thought of like immediately. Of course, some of it I've already thought of, but like it's introducing new ideas and new perspectives that can help shape like the way I package the the video. And of course, honestly, it would have been better had I done this before I did the challenges because I think it could have helped me refine the challenges to make it more interesting at the end. Um, but yeah, at least it can do that for me moving forward for the new challenges that I do. 30 days of ref reflecting on my life. Intriguing to viewers interested in personal growth, make it as emotional and raw as possible. Okay, 30 days of learning Japanese using AI. Make it aspirational yet fun. Can AI help me learn Japanese in 30 days? <laughs> I mean, obviously not, um, but but it's shocking results. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think I will, I will t title it this way. I mean, there's like an obvious answer to this and it sounds ridiculous enough for, for me to actually like click on it to see like what AI can actually help you with. Um, and it isn't saying like, I learned Japanese in 30 days. So it's not like a lie, but at the same time, it, it, it does seem kind of ridiculous. I don't know. Introduce your lack of experience and doubt in AI's ability to teach a complex language. Yes, that is very, very much what happened. I, I doubted it. ChatGPT's abilities very much so. An image of you speaking Japanese with AI or ChatGPT in the background with bold text like 30 days equal fluent. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're really leaning on this like um, a short amount of time to fluency, uh, which honestly is kind of what people like seeing on YouTube. Cause when I watched like this video about like how um, this guy got fluent in one year or something like that, um, it was clickbaity enough for me to like want to actually click on it. but. I don't think he showed very much of him talking or speaking in Japanese. So, I mean, but he passed, he passed the JLPT N1 within a year, which is very impressive. Um, but passing the JLPT doesn't mean that you're fluent in Japanese. It just means that you're very good with like grammar and kanji and stuff like that. But can you speak it, you know, can you speak it and listen? That's to me, that's a, a bigger indicator of fluency in a language. Okay, anyways, let's keep going. 30 days of exercising for 30 minutes a day. This one is evergreen in the fitness space, but we'll need an exciting twist to stand out. 30 days of exercise. What really happens when you never skip a day? You see, I'm just doing the perfect recommendation of what people say, 30 minutes of exercise in a week. So it's, it's five days out of seven. Uh, so it's not every day, um, but the title has something going on for it that I, I do enjoy. So yeah, good, good, uh, good start. Again, body transformation, man. It's just not gonna happen in 30 days, man. Okay, general viral strategy tips for all videos. Um, same, similar stuff. Okay. By adding a twist uh, to each challenge and focusing on storytelling and suspense, you can make these challenges as viral as possible while staying true to your personal brand. What do you think of these adjustments? Uh, very nice, thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely enough for this one we have spent a lot of time doing this. So I'm not actually going to do the Japanese practice today on camera. I'm going to do it off camera and it's going to be primarily me just going over my native sources, um, recordings so I can speak as fluent as possible when it comes to actually using ChatGPT to look at the conversations. I basically know how to speak everything. And I think that's sort of like a, in my opinion, it's kind of a prerequisite if you want to really understand the and break down the conversation because if you don't have like a real grasp on it then i don't really think it's very useful to break it down because you're just gonna like immediately forget it afterwards um so that's why i'm doing it this way um so yeah that's gonna be for day 20 of learning japanese using ai and then day 21 I'll, i will record for this one i don't think i'm gonna record that often i think i'll record once in a while um probably like once i start working on my next video I can record again, um, basically whenever I do YouTube stuff, but this is me getting back into YouTube, like my main channel and everything. And I feel like it's very, I'll, I'll actually switch views real quick. I feel like it's very difficult to have stopped doing YouTube for a long time. And then like, you're getting back into it. Like you're trying to get back the momentum. You're trying to get back to the flow and everything like that. And honestly, YouTube for me, um, for my main channel, at least has been kind of, um, it's a bit of a lonesome journey. Like you're kind of just doing everything on your own, guessing on your own. Like I don't have too many friends. I actually interact with that do YouTube like seriously. I do have a few of people that I could potentially reach out to, but it's like, I'm not used to it. I haven't created that routine. Uh, maybe that can be a 30 day challenge, um, to actually like try to build a like community, not community, but like an interaction with a friend or two that, that are creative people and get that going because I, I think that would be a very, very helpful thing for me. Uh, especially since, like I said, it's a very, very lonely experience, um, to create constantly by yourself. Uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely a sore spot. I feel, uh, anyways, yeah, that's something I need to work on. And I feel like that's usually what causes me to feel like I need to do something about it and where my 30 day challenges come from. It's like me feeling like, man, this part of my life and this part of my, um, me just feels like off and like that, 
it needs some sort of adjustment. And I feel like a good challenge will help me with that. So usually after that, I write it down and add it to a list of 30 day challenge ideas that I have that I will eventually do. So let's do that right now. So you guys just witnessed me doing it naturally versus using ChatGPT's help. I actually do have like a very similar idea um, to what I just wrote down, but it's more so geared towards like musicians. Like I want to meet other musicians. So perhaps like other YouTubers or other video creators and then other musicians can be its own thing. But I do feel like, you know, they're very different people. It's like obviously musicians are not all video creators and vice versa. So yeah, different people. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that I feel when I make videos, I feel very oftentimes like just doing it on my own. And it's, it's nice to have even an AI just chat bot, like bouncing ideas with me, like bouncing ideas back and forth with me and being my brainstorming buddy or coach, whatever I want to call it. I feel like it's more like a buddy rather than a coach because I'm not actually listening to it all the time. Um, but for the most part, it still is a coach. It's just, I'm a bad student to the coach. <laughs> but yeah, like it's nice to have ChatGPT to basically be my buddy in this journey right now. Um, and generally like for me, I, I appreciate it when people leave comments about like giving advice for YouTube or like videos and thumbnails and all that stuff. Um, I generally know the advice. It's just, I, this, at least for this channel, I'm not like trying my best to apply the advice because it's just too much work to do it across the board for everything. So that's why I'm doing it for just my main channel. And eventually if it does grow and I make more income and all that stuff, then I can hire like an editor and all that stuff and actually have the headspace to, to make everything across the board, like higher quality, I guess. But I do feel like uh, ChatGPT being like a focused coach and providing things for me um, when I need it is, is very helpful. So that's why I decided to start this thing. It's just like a, a good sort of jump start for me getting back into YouTube because I feel like I've been out of it for so long and um, at least for the main channel. And I've been needing some, not needing, but like really wanting like a buddy or, or just somebody to, to be there with me along the way. So is that, is that what happens? Is if I do this, is that it creates a thumbs up? Okay. I see now. Uh, so that's why it did it in the past. Okay. Got it. So it's like a, a hand gesture type of thing. Um, I did not know that exists. I don't know how to, to turn that off, but I'll just leave it for fun. Okay. That's enough rambling from me today. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.